Hi everyone, it's Maestra Julia here with a quick recap of how to draw a quick sketch of a rectangle to solve a multiplication question. Let's say we're multiplying 3 by 15. I'm going to draw a rectangle and draw 3 as my first dimension. But that second dimension of 15 is pretty big, so I'm going to split it up into two parts. I'm going to split it into 10 and 5. Now I'm going to multiply out each of the parts. 3 times 10 is 30, and 3 times 5 is 15. Add them all together, and what do you get? I get 45. So 3 times 15 is 45. Let's look at another one. Let's say we're multiplying some bigger numbers together, like 3 times 25. I'm still going to draw a rectangle, but because that 25 is so big, I'm going to make my rectangle now, just a little as bit before, longer. I'm going to label my first dimension, but that 25, I want to break up. I could break that up as 20 and 5, but I could also see it a different way. I could draw a different rectangle and instead break up that 25 into three parts, like 10, 10, and 5. Both of these work. They both add up to 25, so it's just about whichever one works better for your brain. So I'm going to start by multiplying 3 times 20 is 60, and 3 times 5 is 15. Put them all together, I get 75. Now if you like the second version where we broke that 25 into smaller parts, let's check that. Just like before, I'm going to multiply out each part. 3 times 10 is 30, 3 times 10 is 30, and 3 times 5 is 15. I add all those parts together to find out my total, and I got 75, just like before. It's just a matter of which way you like to break it up, which one works better for your brain. Let's try a really big one, like 18 times 14. Now, because both of these are double digits, I'm going to draw more of a square shape instead of a rectangle. And I'm going to start by labeling that first dimension as 18 and my other dimension as 14. But because they're so big, I'm going to break them up. So this 18, I'm going to break up into 10 and 8. And the 14, I'm going to break up into 10 and 4. Now, all I have left to do is multiply out each of these parts. So I'm going to match them up and do 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 4 is 40. 8 times 10 is 80, and 8 times 4 is 32. Now I'm going to add them all together, stacking my numbers neatly. And I start with my 1s, move to my 10s, and I get 252. Let's do one final example. Let's look at 13 times 15. Again, because it's two double-digit numbers, I'm going to draw more of a square shape. I'm going to label one side with my 13. I'm going to break that up into 10 and 3. And on the other side, I'm going to do with my 15 and break that up into 10 and 5. Now I'm going to multiply out each of the parts. 10 times 10 is 100. 3 times 10 is 30. 10 times 5 is 50. And 3 times 5 is 15. Now I want to show you a classic mistake that I see fourth graders make sometimes. Do you see any problems here? What did you notice that I did that might get me into a little bit of trouble? You see how I didn't stack my digits neatly? If I added all my numbers together that way, I would get 645, and that is nowhere close to a reasonable estimate. I need to make sure I stack my digits with my ones and my tens and my hundreds all in the right place, and I get 195. I hope this recap helped you. Bye!